thank you for doing this. We appreciate it. It's a great pleasure to be with you, Jay. I'd like to ask you, first of all, what, w what was your feeling when you heard that you had been nominated to receive the Lincoln Laureate Award? Well, I was a little surprised, uh, and I was humbled because uh, I know of some people in the past who have won it and uh, have great respect for them. So I was really uh, very flattered, humbled, pleased. You're a native Illinoisan. Tell me about your, your early life here in the Chicago area. I was born on the south side of Chicago and uh, grew up in Chicago. One of the few people left, maybe, that uh, hasn't moved too much. So it's been an important part of, uh, Chicago's been an important part of my life. Uh, and uh, went to school in the Hyde Park area and in Chatham, which is a neighbor in the South Side. Okay. Um, who were who were your early influences in life? That's always a, a great question. Uh, influences in life, uh, obviously, our family and and neighborhood. I think uh, I was blessed to, growing up in a an area that uh, had a lot of diversity and uh, middle class values uh, and. It's uh, hard to name one single person other than parents, but uh, I think the whole environment was a healthy environment to grow up in. Did you have uh, any early idea of what you would end up doing for your career, your professional life? I think as a young boy, I thought I wanted to be a trial lawyer. Uh, I'm not sure that ever was a good idea, uh, but that probably was influenced more by Perry Mason books than any idea of what that meant. Uh, but business wasn't something on my mind in the early days. Um, you'd ask, what is that noise? That was the other day. Okay. <coughs> we're going to do a quick touch up early. Okay. To get on Sorry, Jack. It's all right. Not, not a problem. We'll, <coughs> we'll, we'll let everyone get settled and we'll okay. pick up again. Yeah, thanks. Um, okay. It's okay. Hmm? Busy morning for a Friday. No, oh, it's okay. You, you talked about uh, being a trial lawyer early on, but your career took you in a different uh, in a different path. You ended up uh, uh, more on the financial side and the tax side, from from my reading. That's right. I, I went to DePaul University and uh, majored in accounting, and I became a CPA and went to work for Arthur Young and Company, and uh, spent 18 years of my career at Arthur Young. So that was my first job after college. DePaul University uh, has played a big part of your life, in, a big part in your life, and you've played a big part in the life of that university over the years. Uh, tell me about uh, some of the values that you, you picked up there and some of the vision that you, you received there, because you spoke about that in your, your acceptance speech, and I found that very, very nice. DePaul has been an important part of my life. I went to school there for eight years, four years undergrad and four years uh, night law school, and I taught at DePaul for approximately ten years and been blessed to had the chance to be on their board of trustees and be their chairman. And I think a lot about DePaul. I think DePaul was teaching uh, ethics before anybody thought that was important to do. DePaul taught uh, me a lot about uh, diversity, about access, uh, about the importance of competence. And uh, so it was, uh, I think, a very important part of my life. You also spoke about the openness there. Excuse me. <coughs> very dry, I'm sorry. Um, Can I have some of that water, guys? Stop there for a second. Sorry. Ice okay. water will make it worse. That's what I, 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 I know the, the feeling. Yeah. Um, one of the comments you made in your acceptance speech had to do with the openness there. Uh, uh, when when they were asking you to be on the board and, 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 and chair the board, uh, you said, Father, I'm not of this faith. Uh, well, you know, uh, yeah. uh, we'll, we, we won't tell anybody. <laughs> Tell me about the, the role of a, a major Catholic university like that in today's, in today's highly secular world and the values that it, it, it brings to the world. I think DePaul University has uh, uh, got a unique character. It's, uh, it's urban, it's Catholic, and it's Vincentian. And it has uh, uh, got a student body made up of every faith. So it, it is teaching values that are consistent with being a Vincentian Catholic university, but they're values that I think all of us share whether we're of the Catholic faith or not. And uh, I found it to be a, a very important uh, learning experience. Uh, not just what we learned in class about business or law or uh, English, but about ethics and values and people. And I think that's what's so attractive about what DePaul does. Uh, in addition to that, DePaul is one of those unique institutions that has always provided access 
uh, to people. It's one of those universities that in its 110-year history hasn't uh, ever had quotas. So people of all faiths and races and ethnicity have been invited there. They had women as students before women were allowed to vote in the United States. So it's that kind of a place, and it's why it's always been an important part of my life. And those values you just spoke about uh, seem to be embodied in a lot of the corporate culture here at McDonald's. I, I may be jumping ahead a little bit here, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, that's an extremely important, uh, important part of this, this organization, and I think a lot of that comes from you and the people around you. I believe uh, McDonald's has core values that are consistent with my own, and it's one of the things that attracted me to McDonald's, and it's one of the things that uh, I think is important to keep alive and keep centered for the McDonald's system, so I consider it an important part of my job as the chairman and CEO. Uh, you came to McDonald's in what year? 1982. 1982. And uh, what was the corporate culture like when you came here? What was, uh, what was the place like? Where was it heading? And how did you feel like you, you fit into that whole thing? Uh, McDonald's was one of my most important clients, actually, when I got hired. And uh, I, li I knew a lot of the people and had such great respect and affection for all of them that it, uh, although it was a hard decision uh, to join, it, in, in many ways it was an easier decision than most job decisions are, I think. Uh, one of the things that was very clear from the beginning at McDonald's is that this, the whole value structure was, uh, I think, well understood. Ray Kroc, our founder, uh, started this business uh, talking about having values when we were poor, and we did. And uh, there was a time that I joined that the values were very clear, support of the community, giving back to the communities in which we do business was an important part of our ethos. That's how we thought about ourselves. We continue to feel that way today. Uh, there are things more important than uh, selling hamburgers and french fries. We want to be an important part of a community. We want to evidence the kind of uh, values and behaviors that are uh, important for society. And I think our people all share that. And that was true in the beginning. I think it's uh, every bit as true today. In your progress through the organization here at McDonald's, uh, Marshall Berman in his nomination speech said that uh, you went out and you learned the business from the perspective of the individual restaurant owners and operators. You went out behind the counter and saw how things were done. What did that, did that teach you about things? I did spend a good deal of my time uh, working uh, in restaurants and with operators as a part of my whole education process about McDonald's. And Jack, I remember well the uh, uh, time I was working in a McDonald's restaurant assembling a filet of fish sandwiches and the 16-year-old supervising me uh, and I joined the company as an executive vice president, said, Jack, go faster. And I looked at her and said, I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> so uh, I think those experiences were terribly important to understand the business. We run this business uh, on the uh, analogy of a three-legged stool, and that each leg of the stool must be strong for the stool to stand strong. And each leg of that stool represents one element of our system, our owner-operators, our suppliers, and the third leg, our, our company and its employees. And understanding the business from the owner-operator's perspective, understanding the business from the supplier's perspective, is critically important because we need all three legs of that stool to be strong. And the experience in our restaurants, understanding uh, what it takes to run a great restaurant every day for customers, uh, is just the most important thing we can do as executives. This is extremely important to streamlining the decision-making process from top to bottom and in between. I, th I believe that's right. I think. Uh, all big organizations have the challenge of making sure, sure that they can uh, focus on what's important to the customer, uh, that they end up uh, adding value and helping change and not be becoming barriers. And I think the restaurant experience uh, is what grounds us in what we do every day, and that's why it's so important to each of us. And McDonald's, let me see, let me get yes, me. maybe your water. Um, along those lines, you talked about McDonald's being the ultimate expression of the free enterprise system. How does, how does this corporation embody that from the teens who began their careers there all the way up through the executive ranks and everything in between? I do see McDonald's as uh, an embodiment of the free enterprise system. And I think it starts with the fact uh, that McDonald's means opportunity. It's an, uh, an equal opportunity for success. It's not always a guarantee of success for everybody, but it is that opportunity for success. And uh, I think that's true of our employees. Uh, it's true clearly of our owner-operators that have a chance to own and operate their own business. 
but in the context of uh, shared values, shared standards, and a shared brand. And it's also been true of our supplier network, which I think is unique in the world for quality and uh, in terms of uh, scope when you think of the 121 countries we're in. So uh, I believe uh, uh, free enterprise uh, lives and breathes at McDonald's because in, in reality, we're an amalgamation of small businesses since most of our restaurants are independently owned and operated around the world. And I think it's in that context that uh, free enterprise uh, has life and breath and excitement here at McDonald's. And in a real way, you're ambassadors for the uh, free enterprise system around the world, being at work in 120, 20, 121 countries. I believe our 30,000 restaurants in those 121 countries are ambassadors for the free enterprise system. Uh, it is the franchising system which is at the heart of who we are, and I think it is an example of, uh, of free enterprise. And we've been told by government officials over the years uh, that they see not only that we bring technology uh, and, and oftentimes uh, food safety standards to a country that they might not otherwise have, but they also have recognized that this understanding of a service business and free enterprise is part of what we bring to many of the countries that we've opened in. Over the years, I've talked to a number of executives uh, uh, who have won the Order of Lincoln Medallion, and two of one, they've always said that, well, being involved in the community you serve is, is the best business you can do because it's good for the community, it's good for the business, it's good for the people. And you've carried that, uh, I think, several levels here with McDonald's. And one of the things I did some looking over was the new social responsibility uh, report that, uh, that you have out this year. Um, McDonald's is involved in a lot of different charities. It's involved in a lot of good works projects around the world. Why is that such a big part of this company? Our charitable efforts and our social responsibility efforts, I do think, start with the values of our founder, Ray Kroc, and uh, giving back to the communities in which we do business. Being part of the community is just an essential part of how we think about the business. I think I'm most proud of our Ronald McDonald House Charities activity. Uh, where we've now given well over $300 million away to families and children in need around the world. In fact, uh, Ronald McDonald House Charities is sponsoring the first ever World Children's Day event at McDonald's, where on November 20th we're going to raise uh, uh, money for children in all 30,000 of our restaurants. And actually we're partnering with uh, UNESCO in some of this activity. And uh, I think it's just one example of the kinds of things that only McDonald's could do and only McDonald's would do. I'd seen some work about the charities, and you have good publicity that gets that out, but I had no idea it had the worldwide reach that it does. Well, we're very uh, proud of this uh, part of the activity. I think it is true that uh, uh, when you do these kinds of things, uh, that there are benefits to the business. Uh, I don't mean that it sells more hamburgers, but I think it, it makes this a very special place to work. It gives us all a sense of pride and community. And so I think there are real benefits to the business for that kind of activity. And of course, it's the right thing to do, so I think it's easy to do. Well, the right thing to do also carries over to some of the business practices, the best practices this organization uh, has along with, along with animal welfare, environmental concerns, recycling. Could you elaborate on some of those, please? Sure. I, I, think, I think McDonald's has really uh, exercised leadership in the environment, for example. There was a time when it was clear that our customers expected more of us in the environmental area expected us to provide more leadership. And 11, 12 years ago, uh, we, we really got that message and started to uh, spend a lot of time and energy to be sure that we were doing the right things as a matter of uh, business practice. And today, I, I think I can tell you that we're probably one of the most respected companies in the environmental area. And it's always been a special privilege for me in my current role to accept awards on behalf of McDonald's for some of that environmental leadership. We're trying to take that same learning into other areas of the business. And we believe that in the 21st century, social responsibility is not one of those nice things to do. It's what your customers and your employees expect you to do. It's also the right thing to do. It's consistent with our values. And so we do take the social responsibility uh, activities very seriously. It's not, they're not programs. They're part of how we want to behave as a company. I heard the report uh, on all things considered back in the spring about animal welfare and yes. I was really impressed how the company got behind that and actually took the leadership role in that and uh, I thought that was extremely laudable. Uh, Dr. Temple Grandin who's been one of the world experts in animal welfare uh, and has uh, been consulting with us to help us make progress said that uh, we've probably made more progress in the last couple of years than the whole industry has done in the last 25 years and I think that's the kind of leadership that McDonald's should 
exercise in these areas uh, because of our size and because of who we are, but it's also very consistent with, with our values. Another value that McDonald's feels very strongly about, and you, you, you've taken it to heart too, it has to do with diversity. You talked about that earlier. <coughs> you've worked in a number of different, uh, not only inside McDonald's, but in corporate life in America. Could you talk to us about that a bit? McDonald's has a very special record in diversity. I don't think we're satisfied. I think we believe we have more to do. But I think our efforts in diversity, which are not required by law, but are just the right thing to do, are really grounded in a business strategy and in our values. And that is that we do value the team. And if the entire team has grown up the same way and has the same ideas, it's not the same energy as a team that uh, has diverse views. So at the heart of our diversity efforts is a belief in the diversity of the team and in leveraging a team to improve the business. And that leads you to hire people of uh, all races and genders and, and faiths, ethnicity, and, and that's exactly what we've done. And I think we've got a great record on diversity. Uh, our owner-operator system is reflective of the community at large. Uh, the, clearly our employee base is as well. And as I said, I think there's more to do here. This is not something that, that you ever think is exactly right. But I think our record would stand out uh, among big companies in America. I'd like to go back a little bit to public service. Mm -hmm. You, of course, obviously have a uh, great, uh, great attachment to DePaul University, but you're also active in other areas. Um, for a corporate executive, there are a lot of, a lot of demands on your time. What is the, what is the reward and, and the rationale for being uh, involved in economic development activities and, and the like here in Chicago and around the country? I think all of us that. Uh, live in the Chicago area have a special responsibility to keep Chicago the great city it is and it is one of the great cities of the world and to keep it vibrant and that means you got to support the community programs it's not just economic development but it's uh, things like the Field Museum which is such a treasure the Chicago Symphony uh, some of the other things that we uh, are especially proud of in Chicago and uh, for all of us that live here and benefit from the environment of living and working in Chicago. We just have a, a responsibility to make sure that continues and grows. And as an employer, I think there is a benefit to companies to step up and help because it is easier to attract talent when you're trying to hire people uh, to come to the Chicago area when we have such a fabulous, vibrant city. And it is a great place to live, as I think you know. Um, in, in just talking with you and seeing you at, at, at the awards, you strike me as a genuinely happy person. What, what gives you the most satisfaction in your life from, from, from the work you're doing here and uh, the other activities you're engaged in? Well, I think uh, satisfaction for me comes with the people I work with. Uh, it, uh, it's very focused on uh, people and relationships. And uh, to me, the thing I'm most proud of about McDonald's are our people. The thing I enjoy most when I come to work every day is working with people that I respect and, uh, and like. And I feel that way mostly uh, about everybody I've met at, at, in the McDonald's system. And that, in my uh, other activities outside of McDonald's, I think the big payback for doing what we would consider community service is that there's enormous personal benefit in the friends you make, in the people you meet, in the uh, satisfaction you get when you actually get something done that may make a difference. And so I think uh, most of uh, our efforts end up doubly repaying us in terms of the satisfaction you get in life. And that's what keeps me going at McDonald's. I'm pretty much drawing to the end of everything I mm -hmm. want to talk to you about. Uh, are there any, is there anything that I haven't touched upon that you think would be important to the story? I'm wondering if we should talk about uh, McDonald's values a little bit more. Maybe there's a sure. piece um, there. I was also wondering if you couldn't re-ask the question. Mm -hmm. um, why not? Thank you. Okay. Weeks ago, you think I'd remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's okay. I don't know what question it was, so you'll have to oh, help well, it. Uh, <laughs> Anna may have to prompt me. Yeah. Anna, what question were we talking about? Get us there. You had um, talked a little bit about um, our charitable work oh. uh, with Ronald McDonald House mm -hmm. Charities mm -hmm. and right. Ronald McDonald House. Our community service right. Right. as and a company. Went into I used it. I, yeah, I went into World Children's Day. Okay, okay. thanks. I'll we'll, do it. we'll just pick it up at that point. Okay. Um, you, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, uh, went to the United Nations to meet with Kofi Annan about uh, one of the projects you're working on. I'd like to know more about that. Yes, it was a great pleasure to represent McDonald's and meet the Secretary General of the United Nations. Uh, he, he was uh, very gracious with his time and was uh, uh, very pleased that uh, first that McDonald's, uh, uh, through Ronald McDonald House Children's Charities, is sponsoring World Children's Day on November 20th to raise funds for children in need all over the world in all 30,000 of our restaurants. That's something only uh, 
McDonald's could do, but it's also something I think only McDonald's would do. And we are partnering with UNICEF in several markets, too, to help them raise money for their good works for kids around the world. And so uh, the Secretary General was uh, meeting with us to uh, endorse our World Children's Day program and to thank us for our help with their organization. And it was a great thrill to represent the million and a half people that work at McDonald's uh, uh, at that meeting at the United Nations. Isn't it, kind of, I know it's kind of a, isn't it kind of neat to know that when you see the McDonald's store down in the corner, there's a whole lot more going on that just meets the eye? It, it, is, it is a great fun to, to think about uh, what it takes to uh, supply and staff and take care of uh, customers in 30,000 restaurants and serve 46 million people every day. Uh, the, the logistical problems, the training, uh, the kind of uh, enthusiasm and dedication it takes of our people to run a, a quality restaurant every day. It, it is an enormous undertaking and it is kind of fun. I know when I was uh, first hired at McDonald's, uh, uh, one of my kids wanted to know where I worked. Uh, and uh, it, because their whole perspective was just the restaurant. And it took a little while for them to understand that after I had had my restaurant experience, I was actually going to an office every day. Uh, so I think most of our, uh, I think everybody knows McDonald's and has their McDonald's. But there's this huge organization in place that supports the uh, infrastructure that keeps these restaurants running so well. And of course, I'm very proud of each of the people that make that happen. And that certainly comes through. Um, any, any parting thoughts that you'd like to give us, sir? I think uh, receiving this uh, award and honor in, 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 for me, uh, again, was very exciting and uh, flattering and humbling. But I, think, I also think it reflects McDonald's because I think uh, McDonald's uh, values and behaviors as a, as a business system uh, are probably part of the reason I get honored. And it, uh, I think this is appropriate because McDonald's is a very special company uh, we, at the core we have uh, the values of honesty and integrity. Uh, we value diversity in the team. We believe in running the business for the benefit of our owner operators, our suppliers, and our employees. Uh, we are an amalgamation of small businesses. Uh, we care about our communities. And I look at this uh, Lincoln Award as, in part, a recognition of the fact that McDonald's does stand for something special. And uh, you know, it's been my great privilege and honor to, to uh, be their chairman and CEO and to work for such a great company for, for now more than 20 years. So it's been a thrill to be a part of the Lincoln Academy effort and to be awarded and uh, I continue to uh, be pleased and uh, honored that, that we were considered and, and that we did receive this honor.